operate for less and we buy for less, we can pass those savings on to our customers through everyday low prices. Welcome Hugh Jackman! Total revenue, I believe, every year, $400 billion. Having low prices drives traffic to our stores and increases sales. Please welcome John Legend. Thank you. Which then allows us to lower expenses and lower prices again. Please welcome Tom Cruise. All around the globe, Walmart is taking the lead and making a difference. It's a continuous loop. The American dream has become a global concept. I think it's our country's best export. Two thousand twelve was a good year for Walmart. But it was a bad year for Bangladesh. It experienced the deadliest factory fire in its history. Walmart shorts were among the clothes found in the charred remains. But the company escaped accountability. And for many Western retailers whose clothes are made in Bangladesh, it's business as usual. Faultlines travels there to investigate why. Anybody out there know how many zeros are in half a trillion dollars? Take it from a numbers guy, they're a lot. The fire at the Tazreen Fashions factory last November started on the ground floor and quickly spread. At least 112 people died. Hundreds of others were injured. Many workers were trapped inside because the doors were locked and the building had no fire exits. The remains of the fire are still everywhere here. This is where workers jumped out of the burning building onto the roof of this dormitory. There's bars in all the windows, so workers had to kick out at the exhaust fans and jump onto this building. Rukia Begum's daughter, Hina, died in the fire. You haven't received any compensation for your daughter's death? Many of the women who escaped the fire still live in the shadow of the factory. Muktabano is one of them. She says she was sewing the Walmart shorts when the fire broke out. So how did you escape? Can you describe what you were working on? Pen, short pencil. These were the pants you were working on? When word got out that we were visiting, other survivors came to share their stories. So you did the hemming along the zipper and the belt. And how about you? None of the women received any compensation from Walmart. So you hanged and packed it up. And they all vowed to never work at a garment factory again. Do you know who these pair of shorts were for? Walmart. Five months after the fire, yet another disaster in Bangladesh captured the world's attention. Rana Plaza, an eight-story building housing several garment factories, collapsed. More than a thousand people died. Even though the scale of the collapse eclipsed the fire, the fundamental questions raised by Tazreen were the same. How could tragedies like this happen? And who, ultimately, should be held responsible?
Before we arrived in Bangladesh, we'd received internal documents related to the Walmart shorts order. The paper trail gives us an inside look into the complicated way that Walmart produces its clothing. Walmart is a pioneer and also the most ruthless practitioner of a sourcing model that has now come to dominate the apparel industry. It's a system that can shield the company from blame when disaster strikes. Walmart's supply chain is defined by two critical features. The tremendous pressure Walmart puts on its suppliers and its contract factories overseas to slash production costs, which Walmart knows those factories will do by ignoring the rights and safety of workers. And then secondly, the utilization of multiple layers of agents and contractors so that Walmart can distance itself from responsibility for the inevitable consequences of those sourcing practices. Simcoe is a mid-sized garment factory in a neighborhood crowded with them. At its height, it had 1,500 workers. Today, there are 600. Simcoe is where the shorts were supposed to have been made. Walmart placed the order with a New York-based supplier called Success Apparel. Success Apparel then filled it with Simcoe with help from a local buying agent called True Colors. So this is from Success Apparel? Yeah, that's the contract and you can see this is the price and the quantity, 28,000, which is like 337,000 pieces. Nowhere it is mentioned that this is a Walmart product. But except if you see the label, style number, this is AFG. AFG is the Faded Glory. Faded Glory is Walmart's main in-house clothing line. And it was that brand of shorts that was found in the ashes of the Tazreen factory fire. Simcoe says it couldn't handle the order after dozens of workers who left town during the Muslim holiday of Eid didn't return on time. So already we were overbooked, we were over our capacity, and suddenly we don't have the workers to fill, fill, fulfill the orders on time. Kevin Taxin, the CEO of Success Apparels, he visited us, and he was like going through our uh, facilities, oh yeah, the production is, you know, use some four-letter words, etc. and then he was like, and we told him, like, you know, we're having, like, trouble meeting the deadline. You know, we need some extensions. We need some help. He was very upset. He said, not a single day extension they can give us. So he said, find a subcontract, you know, somewhere. So the Walmart supplier, yeah. this direct supplier to Walmart, came here and yes. told you to subcontract. Yes, yes, yes. Subcontracting means paying another factory to take on some of the work. Simcoe was already stretched thin dealing with the shorts. Then it was hit with yet another massive order. And then we've got this other document from Public Clothing Company, and that's another Walmart supplier? Another Walmart supplier. And they've sent a purchase order for almost 300,000 shorts. Yes. Another set of shorts. August 17th. August 17th, three days later. Yes. Simcoe can make around 300,000 garments a month. Put together, the two Walmart orders were more than double its capacity. I guess the logic was you place the order and somehow the factory will fulfill it. Somehow the factory will fulfill it. What is that code for? Uh, that's code for like, yes, you do subcontracting. It, you give it to other lines, other production lines to fulfill the order. Did Walmart know about your production capacity here? Yes, Walmart does third-party audits, so the auditors come and they count your machines. So you, they know exactly how many garments you can produce on average on a line. Given what happened in Tazreen, some have asked why Simcoe didn't simply refuse the second Walmart order. Factories in a place like Bangladesh are engaged in cutthroat competition with competitors in Bangladesh and around the world. So it's practically impossible to turn down a major order from Walmart because that is the factory's livelihood. So to meet Walmart's deadline, Simcoe subcontracted a small part of the success apparel order to a manufacturer called Tuba. Tuba then sent the shorts to its Tazreen factory. A few weeks later, the factory caught fire. Oh my God, couldn't believe, couldn't believe. You know, I could, couldn't believe how can that happen? I don't know. So <clears throat> I called Kevin, you know, I, I said, look, Kevin, that factory, you know, caught fire. 
he got mad, you know, he said, what happened in the factory? So why didn't you send somebody to get our things out? Success Apparel accused Simcoe of subcontracting the order without their knowledge. And Walmart blamed their supplier, Success. But Simcoe insists that Success knew about Tazreen and that Walmart also would have known because its own database, Retail Link, requires suppliers to identify where orders are being filled. Retail Link is supposed to have a record of every factory authorized to produce Walmart goods, every factory engaged in the production of Walmart goods. In May, Walmart named over 240 factories it would no longer work with, saying it had a zero tolerance policy for unauthorized subcontracting. Simco was one of them. If there was no shorts found at Tazreen, then business would have gone on as usual. It's like everybody knows what's going on. It's an open secret, but getting caught on camera is our, I think, in the act, then you have to disown everything and say, I didn't know anything about it. That it is the practice of the Walmart to hide, you know, so not direct contact. So he has a supplier who is the vendor. And every factory you see in Bangladesh are subcontractors. Everybody. Facing a scandal, Walmart refused to accept the shorts or to pay the bill, even after some of the order had already been shipped. And this is our entirely uh, abandoned floor. Out $1.2 million, Simcoe says it's nearly bankrupt. So all of these shorts were made in these production lines. And I really feel bad uh, when I don't see our workers in these production lines, some of whom, they have been with us for like 24, 25 years, you know, and all these machines are now empty. After the Tazreen fire, Walmart announced it had dropped Success Apparel as a supplier. We tried to speak to Success's representative in Bangladesh, but we found the company had closed down its office here. We also tried to interview the company's CEO, Gila Goodman, in New York, but she refused to speak with us. Kevin Taxon, who was Success's president at the time of the fire, also refused to speak to us on camera. He now heads up another supplier called Americo Group. One of its clients is Walmart. If Walmart were really so upset about what Success Apparel did, one assumes they would not be keen to continue to do business with a leading executive from Success Apparel. On the phone, Kevin told us that neither Success nor its agent in Bangladesh, True Colors, knew about the subcontract to Tazreen. But we managed to track down True Colors' last remaining employee in Dhaka. If there's any subcontracting, would you be aware of that? Yeah. And then what do you do with that information? Do you pass it up? Yeah, we pass it up to our importer. So can you read this email from me and tell me who it's from? Okay, it's saying, Hi Kanta, I heard the shocking news about the fire last evening. It is number 26. And what's the subject line of the email? Fire at Subcon. Subcon is industry speak for subcontractor. That email was sent by a manager at True Colors shortly after the fire. So despite Success's denials, their own agent may have been aware of the subcontract to Tazreen. We're on the trail investigating how Walmart's supply chain works here in Bangladesh. Does the company know when its orders are being subcontracted? Is the way they source their clothing, the system itself, flawed? The garment industry is notoriously secretive, so we needed an insider. We're on our way to meet an auditor. He was hired by Walmart to assess standards at some of its factories. It's very rare for auditors to speak on the record, and he doesn't want to speak to us on camera. So we recorded the conversation secretly. In Bangladesh, government regulation of garment factories is lax, and international companies are not legally required to ensure working conditions are safe. Some companies hire auditors to inspect the factories. The system of Walmart is uh, very good. How so? Uh, because they rely on their agents. They don't source their from the factories. Mm -hmm. That's a problem in India, in my opinion. Because if you rely on agents, 
that agent sells the order to some agent. That some agent sells the order to another agent. So it changes I think three, four times. Mm -hmm. so what do you think about their system? What, why is it bad? Like, what's the danger? If the agents means uh, even no way, it has not come to it. products are coming in, they don't have any idea. It's a danger. So you uh, have very little idea. After one or two agents, you're lost. So from what you're saying, it sounds like Walmart's supply chain is, is so out of control that there could be more Tazreens. Walmart has no idea from where the agents are coming from. Bad and worse sentence I have. I can say. Well, if Walmart doesn't know where its goods are being produced, it's because they choose not to know. Uh, this is a company whose success is built first and foremost on the extraordinary level of control they exert over production in their global supply chain. Walmart refused to give us any information about its supply chain. But a spokesperson told us Walmart relies on its suppliers to implement the company's standards. There's a reason Bangladesh is so popular with companies, especially those that produce inexpensive clothes that need to be made quickly. It's the rock bottom, cheapest place in the world to make apparel. It's cheap because it has the lowest minimum wage for apparel workers of any country in the world at 18 cents an hour. That's about $38 a month. But it goes both ways. Garments are just as important to Bangladesh, accounting for 80% of its exports and giving jobs to 4 million people, mostly poor women. That gives the industry enormous leverage inside the country. So what they do, the retailers and buyers come here to look for the uh, cheapest supplier. So here it, it, there is a buyer's market. Everybody share, everybody takes the, uh, the share of the cake. So these are, formally we have five to six layers, but there are uh, many hands with these layers who are taking all this money. It's not just the multinationals. In Bangladesh, everyone wants a shot at making it in the garment industry. I'm headed to a small factory that does finishing of garments. They're supposed to be finishing garments for Walmart. I'm posing as a buyer to get in there. For those who can't open large factories, there's always business in subcontracting. Even if it means putting the finishing touches on garments before they're shipped out. Do you make anything that ends up in Walmart? You've made products that go to Walmart. Were you an authorized Walmart subcontractor? So is this very common that a lot of factories subcontract for big labels like Walmart without authorization? Sabina? You're 14. So you started working when you were 13 years old? Yes. So what's the average age of your workers? But we just spoke to a girl who said she's 14. Walmart told us they don't tolerate child labor in their supply chain, and they're investigating whether this finishing center did any work on Walmart products. Once we found one finishing house, it wasn't hard to find others. What are you making? Buttons. How many buttons do you put on every day? How old are you? How long have you been working here? Shili, how old are you? Shili, do you go to school? How much money do you make here, Shili? 
2,500 taka is just $32 a month. So we are putting the elastic band into old navy pants. It says Old Navy. Old Navy is owned by Gap Inc., one of the largest clothing companies in the world. This is where a lot of America's clothes come from, and it's a reality many companies don't want us to see. This is one of very many subcontracting factories at the bottom of the supply chain in Bangladesh. It seems completely unregulated, completely unauthorized. There's no fire extinguisher, no fire exit. It's just a shack in someone's backyard. This morning we went to a finishing house mm -hmm. and they had about 20 workers there. More than half of them were under 14. There were girls as young as 12 mm -hmm. making clothes for Gap. Really? In a finishing section that you want? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I mean, for me, <laughs> just, I just can't believe. So this is the time that Gap should step forward to make this correct. Oh my gosh. So see the, how critical is the supply chain is. How critical it is. Gap declined to give us an on-camera interview. They did give us a statement, though, saying the products we found were, quote, either counterfeit or improperly acquired. But through the barcodes on the tags we found at the finishing house, we were able to match the garments to ones at Old Navy stores in the US. Gap added that it, quote, strictly prohibits any vendor from employing underage workers. There's a fairy tale that major brands and retailers like Gap and Walmart tell to the public. In this fairy tale, Gap and Walmart are companies that are socially responsible and deeply committed to protecting the rights of workers and making every effort to inspect their factories and ensure that everything is on the up and up. That fairy tale has very little to do with the reality of the supply chain. For Walmart, for Gap, worker rights issues are not a moral issue. They're an issue of reputational risk. And Walmart and Gap understand that their image in the eyes of the public has a very large impact on the degree to which they can get people to come to their stores and buy their goods. And so to the extent that they can be convinced that their image will be damaged if they don't do the right thing for workers, then they will make change. Months after the Tazreen fire, the memories of that disaster and the ones that followed are still fresh in people's minds. Kalpana Akhtar, a workers' rights activist, rushed to the scene not long after the fire began. It was horrific. For my experience, I think I was crying, and you know, my, and it, the, still you can feel the heat inside, and my skin was like burning. Yeah. yeah. It took Walmart two days to acknowledge its connection to Tazreen, after photographs emerged showing its labels in the wreckage. The Walmart clothes wasn't burnt to ash, so some others maybe, but not them. Kalpana, like the women who survived the fire, is still haunted by what she saw that day. It's a feeling that when you are in the, inside the building, you can feel that how these workers fought to remove this window bar, the adjustment bar, too, and they jumped. My feeling was like, nothing can be worse than this. Nothing can be worse than this. Like seeing this people burned to ash and their family crying in front of you and they cannot find the, I mean, they cannot identify these bodies, whether is they are beloved or not. Nobody think about this, these human faces who are making clothes for them and dying in these factories every day. Nobody talking about their compensation. Nobody talking about their wages that they're getting. Even, I would say, even they don't even consider they are the human. But they are really human. They have needs, they have a voice, they wanted to speak out. They have right to have a safe working place. 